Democrats, you better wake up and you better wake up fast. When Trump comes to the heart of black America, to Harlem, and is receiving a warm welcome, almost a hero's welcome, the alarm bells are going off that you're about to lose the election. When Trump can walk onto your base with no problem at all and be embraced by the community, that's a big problem if you are a Democrat. The White House, you better wake up. All those million-dollar consultants, you better put them to work. Don't take your base for granted. You're already bleeding support with your base of African Americans and Latinos. And Trump can smell the blood in the water. And he says, I'm bringing the fight to you. I'm going to black America. I'm coming to Harlem. Trump, when he said he would do something, he would do it. He, do it. he, he takes do action cities. and he does care about the people. Excuse me for a second, please. On your triple web. Make la madre. It looks like the Democrats are in trouble. And you might be thinking, how is this possible? Donald Trump is winning Latinos? Build the wall, Donald Trump? That's right. For Latinos, this election is all about inflation. And that makes sense. Inflation is bad right now. They're going to have to change the, the name of the game show to The Price is f what now? <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. I know I really shouldn't laugh. Actually, I should. The nuts have been lied to so much that the reality of truth is actually painful. Obviously, the saying the truth hurts is absolutely real. And right now, Donald Trump is bringing the pain. To tell you the truth, I have no mercy. With what they've done to Donald Trump, they don't deserve any mercy. And with what they've done to this country, they definitely don't deserve any mercy. What they do deserve is an epic beatdown. They deserve full repudiation. They deserve to be on the receiving end of a full landslide smackdown. They deserve nothing less. And I'm telling you, the next seven months are gonna be pleasurable for us to watch. I know what you're thinking. Donald Trump is probably going to be convicted of one or two charges or maybe more in different jurisdictions, but we all know the truth. They can't stop what's coming. They can arrest him, they can convict him, but they can't stop what's coming. And I have a funny feeling they're beginning to realize that right now. Check out how Jesse Waters described aptly what is happening. Cut. American decay, symbolized by the burnt out borough. And Carter promised to quote, turn it around. Three years later, Ronald Reagan stopped by to see if Carter had lived up to his promise. And when he arrived, said he hadn't seen anything like this since London after the Blitz. You see the parallel? You know, Dementia Joe goes out there and promises to build back better. And Donald Trump asks everybody, what do you have to lose? Now, three years later, going into four years later, people are realizing, I got a whole lot to lose. And we haven't seen this kind of chaos in this country for a long time. So the parallels are quite close. But unlike Carter, Reagan got in the middle of a crowd of black Americans. They yelled at him, bring back jobs. <laughs> and Reagan shouted, I can't do a damn thing for you if you don't get elected. And that's exactly the same with Donald Trump. I understand your plight. I'm gonna come see you, but you gotta vote for me and he promised to try as hard as he could. It was a bold move for a white Republican to go deep in the South Bronx, and it paid off. Reagan won almost every state in the country. Now, I don't think a Reagan-esque style landslide is even possible anymore because of, you know, how they count the votes and everything, but I'm pretty sure that Donald Trump can really, really make some inroads on some of these, uh, as I could say, inner city communities. You know what I mean. Including New York, the last Republican candidate to do it. Yesterday, in a Reagan-esque move, Trump hit up a bodega in Harlem, which showed him a lot of love. Donald Trump wasn't treated like the racist dictator the media paints him as. He was greeted with love and affection. But and, and that's why, I don't know if you've seen in the last couple of days, if you happen to 
visit the sewer of MSNBC or CNN, they are trashing the visit because they have no choice but to trash the visit. They, they can't let that visual stand on its own because if people believe, if people understand that the black and Hispanic community in Harlem, Harlem, New York City, the deepest of blue, blue areas is basically opening their arms to Donald Trump, that's a nightmare. That is absolutely a nightmare for them. Not even so much because it happened, but because it was televised, that people saw it. Like I said in my last couple of videos, the reason why this entire thing is happening is because the judge said he had to be in New York for every single court session. And now they realize what he's going to do is basically find these pockets in the New York area. I don't even think it has to be in New York City anymore, but he's probably gonna hit the Bronx. He's probably gonna hit Queens. He's gonna be all over the five boroughs and he's going to show people, hey, I'm the guy. I don't believe, I'm not the monster under the bed. I'm just Donald Trump. You remember me, don't you? I was the guy in the movie Home Alone. I was the guy that Jesse Jackson came to see. I was the guy that Al Sharpton came to see. You saw me all over the streets. I put the ice rink back together. They don't believe it now. They're realizing, oh crap, what did we do? What did we do by making him stay in Manhattan? The city where this man built his Bones, skyscrapers everywhere. It's got his name on it. I think they made a big, huge <laughs> mistake of epic proportions. And so now the media's got to go out there and say it's fake. This is all fake. This is stage. <laughs> Come on, man. You, you understand the event may be planned by the New York Young Republicans, but the people still came out there. That's the part that they don't want you to know. And we're going to show you Poo Poo Diaper Joe's event, which was absolutely horrific so let's get back to this the very people the press tells you he hates now if harlem's chanting four more years to trump what's november gonna look like i love this city and it's gone so bad in the last three years four years and we're gonna straighten new york out so running for president we're putting a big hit on new york we think we can win new york with a half a million migrants that brought in and take over the parks they took over your hotels they take over everything it's no good and you know what they've done they've destroyed so many people the african-american community now is not getting jobs migrants are taking their jobs that are here illegally hispanics are not getting jobs migrants are taking the jobs we're gonna have to do something because no country can sustain it these are prisoners and people from mental institutions largely that are Harlem's chanting Trump, 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 while Donald says mentally ill bad hombres are taking their jobs. And understand what Trump did at that bodega and what Trump did in Atlanta at the Chick-fil-A didn't cost him anything. Didn't have to pay for any ads. Didn't have to do anything. Didn't have to really pay for any staffing. Just walked in, had some people contact some people, arrange the visit, had Secret Service go ahead and do their due diligence. But he didn't have to shell out a check to run an ad that nobody's watching. I think you have to understand as well. And I'm gonna make this clear because I was worked in an advertising agency, one of the biggest advertising agencies in the country. These multi-million, tens of million dollar budgets that they put towards ads on the television stations, that's nothing but payola. You have to understand, if you're writing a five, 10, $15 million check to MSNBC, do you think that station that you're writing that check to is gonna talk bad about you? Of course not, because they want that money. Donald Trump doesn't have to do that. He can just walk around New York, the cameras are there, doesn't have to pay anything. He's got True Social, doesn't have to pay anything. Has guys like me on YouTube, doesn't have to pay us anything. All they want to do is shut us all up. They want to just basically suppress our audiences, make sure everybody doesn't see what we're talking about. But it doesn't cost him anything. Can you imagine? what kind of promotion he would have if people were allowed to speak freely. It scares the gejeebus out of them. But let's continue. That moment destroys all the propaganda. <laughs> the spontaneity, the humanity, the reality of a moment like that renders all of the talking points and all the hoaxes powerless.
Completely He's setting moved. off chain reactions with moments like this and last week in Atlanta. I don't care what the media tells you, Mr. Trump. Thank we support you. you. Uh, we support love you. Okay, 4 p.m. We've been 4 p.m. Come here, let me give you a hug. Please do. And then they tried to trash that poor woman just because she gave Trump a hug. Don't they realize at this point it's no longer working? There, it, it, all the stuff that they've said and all the different racist stuff, it's no longer working. People can see this man for the man he is. Even if she is a conservative black person, even if she is a Republican, it's kind of hard to call this guy a racist if he's hugging a black woman. I don't know any racist. I'm sure I've met some racists, but I'm pretty sure if you're a racist, you don't want to be hugging up on a black woman. You don't want to be hugging up on a Spanish woman. It's vile to you. You don't want to have nothing to do with that. Go ahead and give some of these uh, other guys the chance to show they're not the way they are. And I bet you you'll be surprised if you give some guys you know who I'm talking about some bacon. They ain't going to want to take it. Don't want to touch it. Not going to even fake it. Donald Trump is real. And that's the problem that they're having. They, they can't do it anything about it. Come on in, come on in, come on in. Yes, come on in. Yes, Kayla, yes. We're gonna get rid of Biden. Yes! Yes! I love that. <laughs> Trump gets indicted in Georgia. Atlanta says, we love you. Trump mm -hmm. gets indicted in New York. Harlem says four more years. Donnie from the block. We've been trying to tell you Johnny's been out in the streets and they didn't believe us. Who do you want to win the 2024 election, Joe Biden or Donald Trump? Donald Trump. I want Donald Trump. 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 When he was in, it was no crime. Crime was down. Uncle Donald. No cap. No cap means no lie, no BS. Uncle Donald. That's my man. No BS. That's what no cap means. I have to explain some of this street language for you. That's a nice guy. Trump is straight up and down, like six o'clock. Um, at least I know what, it, what I get when it comes to him. I was more comfortable with Donald Trump in office. Trump, that's right, I said it. That's right, I said it. What do you like about Donald Trump? He don't bull he don't care, like, you know, I like that. A white Republican billionaire is hugging the block harder than Spanish Hollywood. <laughs> it didn't dawn on them until the bodega. Excuse me for a second, please. So sorry, that is too funny. That's John Leguizamo, the actor. And he's even beginning to realize, and this guy has been a staunch hater of Donald Trump. And he is happy, having to recognize what's going on. Padre. It looks like the Democrats are in trouble. Big trouble, big trouble. And you might be thinking, how is this possible? Donald Trump is winning Latinos? Build the wall, Donald Trump? That's right, for Latinos, this election is all about inflation. And that makes sense. Inflation is bad right now. They're gonna have to change the, the name of the game show to the price is what now? <laughs> They're panicking because Trump's picking off their people. And remember, I'm not saying, nor have I heard anybody say that Trump is going to win the black vote or that Trump is going to win the Hispanic Latino vote. Nope, not saying that at all. Obviously, the Democrats are going to win those votes. However, picking them off, making that gap smaller, that's all it takes. Going from a marginal percentage that most Republicans can get to 30, 35 percent of the vote, that's what changes the entire election. There's nothing they can do if he's getting, you know, 25, 35 percent of the black vote or Hispanic vote. Just because you leave the streets doesn't mean you lose touch. Inflation, crime and migrants don't touch limousine liberals. But a man who's been riding limos his whole life still knows the cost of living and knows migrant crime can cost you your life. Now understand, when he said that, I, something struck me when I watched the show. You know, most of these guys in, on the, you know, 
Morning Joe show and all these other shows, they laughed when they heard that Donald Trump buys Taco Bell or that he buys Chick-fil-A or he likes Diet Coke or he likes to have McDonald's for food. They all laughed when they found that out. That's what makes him real. He's like, yeah, I, I had money now. I, I don't need to eat this stuff. And he probably could lose a few pounds. But at the same time, he understands that's what I used to eat when I was younger. And I still eat it. It doesn't make me bad, but I don't have to go blow 700 bucks on a dinner at a steakhouse in New York City. Hey, go get me a couple burgers. That's what kept him real and in touch with people for decades. Bodega owners for Trump. Kind of has a nice ring to it. Both know what it's like to be charged with a crime for defending yourself. <laughs> the media knows they've unleashed a political animal. He walks outside of the court, courthouse and does these speeches, going to this bodega and having hundreds of people wanting to meet him and using these moments covered by Fox News and other far right networks. It's not just far right networks. I don't know why they say that. News is news. Why wouldn't you cover it? In fact, I'm pretty sure we're watching the coverage on your network. As sort of campaign events, I think there is some, I think there is something to be said for what he can do with this. Essentially, he's like a caged animal and, and that's a dangerous situation. He's feeling very threatened. Uh, he's out of control. And so we do expect him to lash out. Does Trump seem out of control to you for a guy facing 91 counts? I mean, I'd be doing acupuncture if I was hit with one misdemeanor. I, I, I talked about that last night in one of my videos. What is she talking about? Mega Haberman from the New York Times said he was falling asleep in, in, in the courtroom, which was absolute BS. And now this woman, I don't know if she's ever gone out of her studio is saying he looks like a caged animal. And that's where the incongruence comes in. That's where the lies get broken. You have someone on television telling you, hey, this guy's a caged animal, meaning he's a lunatic. And then you've got the visual playing right on the same newscast, on the exact same set. Mika and Joe are sitting there showing Trump strolling through a bodega and thousands of people cheering for him and he's waving and talking to them, looking anything but like a caged animal. It makes you look stupid. I don't even think these people can help themselves at this point. They're looking at a camera straight up and lying to people who can see it on the same television show. Understand, they didn't have to flip this, the channel. It was on a split screen. Hey, this guy over here that you're seeing over here who's hugging people is acting like a caged animal. And then they wonder what's happening. How's Trump in Harlem stacked with Biden in Pittsburgh? No bueno. Let me ask you, have you seen one campaign event where Dementia Joe has gone where there's been throngs of people cheering for him? Throngs. They always look like this. Joe's got a go chance in Pittsburgh. Imagine what they're chanting in Georgia. Probably can't air it. These two campaigns, day and night. Trump talks about your issues. Biden talks about himself. I was in the motel at the local motel getting changed, and uh, I was in one of those eight by 10 bathrooms, you know, they have shower, toilet, and a sink, and I got a towel on me and shaving cream. You mean a normal bathroom? Are you that out of touch? You know, one of those eight by 10 bathrooms, you know, you know, small bathrooms, it's not like a suite that I'm used to be, you know, being in. It's just a normal bathroom. I happen to be there in a hotel. I hear bam, bam, bam at my door really loudly. And uh, I wonder what the hell is that? And I walk to the door and open it up and standing there was the former governor of the state of Delaware. Albert Ann Carvel, big guy, about six five, talked at you like is. I'm standing in town. Sort of like he talks. While Trump's talking policy, Biden says his uncle was eaten by cannibals. My uncle, they call him Ambrose uh, Brosey, they call him Bosey. My uncle Bosey was a hell of an athlete. They tell me when he was a kid. And he became an army. Ha, what? Before the Air Force came along. 
each of those single engine planes as reconnaissance over war zones. I, I sometimes think he makes up these stories because nobody in the audience was born in like 1910. And so they don't think that anybody can check because he just makes this stuff up. He got shot down in New Guinea and uh, they never found the body because there used to be there a lot of cannibals for real in that part of New Guinea. Uh, the Pentagon says Biden's uncle was a passenger when the plane's engines failed and the aircraft ditched in the ocean. The plane wasn't shot down, his uncle wasn't the pilot, and cannibals didn't need him. But you know what? The media, actually, people on MSNBC and CNN, will not tell people the truth. So they just let the story slide. You know, he just said something, it's absolutely true, and they never do any fact checking. But yet, they'll fact check Donald Trump on air live as he's talking and the men holding biden signs i mean you ever seen such a sad group those poor poor hostages look at this photo more people were outside of a bodega than a pittsburgh rally for biden biden straight up plagiarizing trump's playbook now steel tariffs in pennsylvania then pops into a fast food joint tell me if you spot the difference now this is absolutely real I'm going to show you the full video as soon as this is done. Wow, little kid stopped him in his tracks. Wonder why. Oh, you're so cute. You understand who she's telling to get back, his staffer. She's not telling fans or supporters to get back. When I show you who she's telling to get back, you're probably not gonna be surprised. It's the media, it's press. There's nobody there following Dementia Joe into this store. They don't care. Didn't see a lot of love. Biden should borrow some of Trump's caged animal energy, you know? <laughs> they said this election was a choice between love and hate. What they really mean is they hate how much you love them. Like I said, Jesse only showed a part of Poo Poo Diapers Joe visit to the gas station or fast food restaurant. I'm going to show you the full unedited clip of the entirety of his visit to this campaign event. I'm going to be able to do it really quickly. You won't believe how long it took for him to go in and out at this campaign event. Check this out. Yeah, this is the unedited event as shown on C-SPAN. He walks in, there's maybe eight, nine people there. Except for the guys behind the counter, there's probably more people behind the counter and they are looking at the event or visiting Joe. You got the staffer pushing back the media, which I'm going to show you. This is pathetic. Low energy, nothing going on. 81 million votes. Unbelievable. Got like four guys behind a counter that don't want to be anywhere near him, just taking a picture. Smile. This is the President of the United States at a campaign event. Now they're going to ask him about the tariffs on China Steel, and he mumbles something incoherently about Trump. Don't jump, don't Trump. I don't know what the hell he just said. Now watch this. As they turn, you can see all the people that were there are all press. Look at them. They're all, the, the entirety of the people at this event are all press associates. 
They're all filing out now. The store is empty. There's no fans. There's no supporters. There's no voters. This is all the press that was following him in the press pool. There's nobody else there. That's it. He was in and out of the entire event in under three minutes. That's it. Nobody, nobody cared. Nobody went there. They understood they had to vet everybody in advance so they knew who would be there. And they brought this guy in for a televised photo op in front of maybe eight people. And the rest was the media. And he was in and out in under three minutes. The contrast couldn't be clearer. Other than the media and a bunch of nutty people, nobody cares about Poo Poo Diaper Joe. There's only one way, one way that Poo Poo Diaper Joe could win this election. And I can't say it here on YouTube, but I think y'all know exactly what I'm talking about. In any event, the panic is real and it's much deserved. Hey, don't forget, join me this Saturday night. I'm going to be doing a live broadcast of the Trump rally in Wilmington, North Carolina. And just click right here to be notified when I go live. Talk to you soon. I'm sure they're back in court today, so I'll have something this evening to talk about. Thanks for watching.